So if you just, just for a little while, with the Lord's help, play it forward. Can you just reverberate that in this atmosphere? Somebody shout, play it forward. Play it forward. As the text opens, Jesus is being tested and tempted. They are trying to draw him into a trap to discredit his work and discredit his reputation. And so one of the subject matter experts in the law, they come to Jesus asking for him to make a distinction uh -huh. in the realm of the law. And he, without hesitation, says that you are to love the Lord your God with all of your heart yes, yes. and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Somebody get this. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. For all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, amen, I, I don't want to be long, but I, I've got to share with you what thus says the Lord. Because as I began to read the text, I saw three key principles as related to this wonder called love. And key principle number one shares with us a man that love is a choice. Amen. Yes, sir. And the decision to love is demonstrated by our willingness to serve. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Now I need to share with you that this is a fundamental principle of human relationships. And the wisdom of Jesus, the master teacher. Yes, Jesus is asked, teacher, which is the greatest in the commandment of the law? And Jesus replied, he says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And then love your neighbor yes, sir. as yourself. Yes, sir. Now, uh, let's, let's do a little wordplay, if you don't mind. Uh, let's exchange the word love for Serve. All right. All right. All right. Because one of the things you must understand is that love, and I shared this with you on last week, love is more than a feeling. All right. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Love is what you do. That's Amen. Right. Yes, sir. Don't tell me you love me, but on, can't sir. be Come there on, when I need you. Come on, sir. Don't tell me that you love me, but you leave me hanging Come in down. times of Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because love is more than lip service. Love yes. is a lifestyle yes. and it is demonstrated yes. by your willingness and the commitment yes. to serve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, love in its true sense is a decision demonstrated. Love is not something, this is why I say, you don't fall in love. Uh -huh. I know it makes for good lyrics and a song. I, I, I know that it makes for good poetry that you just could not help yourself. You just looked up and before you knew it, oops, you fell in love. But can I share with you that love, amen, is not something that you fall into, but love is the service that you decide to give. That's right. Yes, sir. Oh, come on, yes, can you sir. say amen? Yes, oh, I, I, I would call to the witness stand the writings of Paul to the Corinthian church when he began to share with them this mystery and he related this mystery of God's love and love in its true sense to amen that of marriage and he says to the husbands he says husbands love your wives. Yes, sir. Now that does not mean that you're going to always be happy about it. Right, right. Come on. That does not mean that you're going to always fall over yourself uh, to do it. But God says that I want you to love to intentionally demonstrate your affection. 
nation by your service. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, come on, can you say amen? amen? And so, people of God, you've got to understand, amen, that that is what God is calling for us, amen, to do. He's calling us to walk in this principle of love and love is demonstrated in your willingness to serve that's right, that's can right. you say amen? amen pray with me I'm not going to be too long just right. long enough right. because there is a second principle amen concerning this thing called love and that principle is simply this do what you love and love what you do. All right. uh, there are two scriptures that I would throw in this sermonic mix. Amen. One found in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. What the Bible says, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all of your might. Uh, but then there is another scripture I, I've got to just share. Amen. That is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. Because, amen, Paul begins to write concerning loving what you do. And he says, whatever you do, yes, do it all for the glory uh -huh. of God. Uh -huh. Now, ironically, if you look at these scriptures in comparison, Amen. You will discover that, amen, one scripture is about faith-centered effort. And the other scripture is about passion-centered effort. But I, I want you to know that there is not a conflict of scripture, but a confirmation of scripture. Because the truth is, faith and passion go together. All right. Oh, come on, can't you say amen? Yes, now, now, let me make some clarification because you need to understand about passion. Passion is not screaming because you're convinced that you're right. All right, all right. You know, when folk like to argue, they blame it on being passionate. I'm just, I'm not argumentative. I'm just passionate. But you got to understand passion in its true sense. Amen. It's not you trying to prove your point and that you've got to always have the last word. Uh, am I right about it here? Amen. And, and on the, amen, uh, the other hand, you've got to understand that amen, uh, it takes faith to get started, but it takes passion to see it through. Can you say amen? Amen. And so, people of God, you've got to understand that it takes both faith and passion, amen, to take the risk necessary to follow God's calling in the area where you have been ordained. Yes, Can you say amen? amen? And so, amen, I share with you this principle, do what you love and love what you do. Uh, you've got to, amen, get to the point where you find what you were born to do and then do it as if your life depended on it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, are you listening here? Why? Because it is that kind of passion that breeds the kind of endurance and diligence that is necessary to produce excellence. And I need to share with you something concerning excellence. I'm, I'm not talking about doing just enough to get by. I'm not, I'm not talking about the kind of work ethic, amen, where, amen, you work real good as long as uh, the, the, the man is around. Oh, Y'all don't hear me. But, but I'm talking about, amen, the kind of endurance and diligence that produces excellence. And excellence, whatever it is achieved in any area, will always yield a reward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is why, amen, the best person that any employer can hire is a Christian applicant. All right. All right. Because we're not just, uh, I'm going to prove my point, because we're not just going to get in there and do what's necessary all day. Uh, we're going to strive for excellence because we understand that we are called to work as unto the Lord. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Oh, it's getting quiet. I feel a, I feel a cold breeze in here. But I'm going to keep on pressing because this is what God wants us to have. And you've got to understand, people of God, we've got to be willing, like Jesus taught us, to always go the extra mile. Uh, and when you do your best in everything you do, when you make the decision that my life is going to display and express excellence in all things, then I come to tell you that whatever you love and apply that type of diligence, endurance, and excellence in, that is the area that you can look for God to promote you. All right. All right. Excellence will always be rewarded. Yeah. Are you listening here? I, I, I just need to share a short testimony. Amen. Just to bring it a little closer to home. I remember when I was working in the factories years ago. Amen. And ever so often, amen, they would have what is called a layoff. Uh -huh. Oh, and I went through that one time. I didn't like it, bro. I didn't like being laid off. I got a job, but I'm at home. I wanted to, amen, put myself in a position where I was not expendable. So you know what I did? I cross-trained on everything in my department. I learned not just my job, but the man next to me. I learned his job. And then the man across from me, I learned his job. And the next time they got ready to lay off, Josh, you know what? They laid off three of the men in my department. But guess what? I was still in there making my money. Why? Because excellence will always pay off. This is why you, you don't approach anything, amen, haphazardly. You, you last a days ago, amen, you give your best in everything. And then when you give your best, oh, God will do the rest. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Listen, when you love what you do, you are not dependent on the approval of people to validate your efforts. Yeah. Oh, when you love what you do, amen, you're not sitting around waiting for somebody to pat you on the back mm -hmm. uh, to tell you that you, you're doing a good job. Uh, listen, you, you come, amen, with a mind made up that yes, I'm going to do, amen, the best that I can do because I serve the best and I represent the best. And so guess what? Anything that is connected to me is going to reflect who I am. I'm the best. And I do the best. Oh, y'all don't hear me here. See, that's how you got to see yourself. Amen. And then you are not, amen, discouraged or have an emotional setback when people are not, amen, telling you how wonderful you are. Oh, come on, can you say amen? Listen, when you love what you do, you don't need external motivation to get you going. When you love what you do, you will do the work and be effective in your endeavor. Let me throw some scripture in the mix. Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 through 3. Paul gives encouragement to the movers and shakers of his life group. He says, therefore, we are all, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience. Let us run with endurance. Let us run with perseverance the race that he is set before us. Looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. 
souls. Uh, you've got to understand, people of God. Amen. Can I just share with you this legacy? Amen. Amen. This, this principle. Can I share with you? Amen. That if you're going to fulfill, amen, that mandate from God, you've got to have three things in place. You've got to have a memory of the past. Amen. You've got to have an objective for your future and then uh, amen primarily you must always uh, look to Jesus or oh, somebody shout remember the past you gotta understand that we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses they are those that have gone on before us uh, that have prepared the path uh, who have paved the way uh, who have blazed the trail uh, in order for you to have the liberties that you now have. Listen, my beautiful, wonderful black people. Can I share with you the reason why you cannot afford to give up any ground right about now? It's because too many lives have been lost. Too many people have sacrificed. Too many people, amen, were, were whipped and beaten. Amen. Scorn and we owe it to them yeah. Yeah. to stand up yeah. and maintain the ground yeah. that they gained Woo. for us. I know you're standing high right about now, but can I share with you, whatever you do, don't forget, you're standing on the shoulders Woo. of those that have come before you. Yeah. Oh, they used to sing a song, I'm too close yeah. to my journey's end. I'm, I'm too close to shaking hands with my friends. I, I can't give up now. You got to make that mind a man set up. You got to determine in your own spirit that I've come too far. Too many things have been done for me to enjoy the privilege for me to give up ground. That's why, listen, I don't let them talk to me any kind of way. I, I don't let them treat me any kind of way. No, you can't get in front of me in the line because I was here first. Oh, y'all don't hear me here today. Yes, I will vote. And yes, my vote does count. And yes, I do have a voice. And yes, my voice does count. And yes, I'm a man. And yes, my life does matter. You got to remember the past. But also, you got to think Legacy. Somebody shout thief. Legacy. You gotta understand that just like there were those that came before you, there are those that are coming after you. And you owe it to your children and your children's children. Amen. To hold the ground. To amen. Continue. Amen. To fight for justice. To continue. Amen. To walk with dignity. To continue to walk as wrong you are not some hood rat. You are royalty. Hear me and hear me good. You, amen, are more than where you came from. You are more than what you do for me. You are the child of the Most High God. And that means, amen, that your life should matter. Oh, come on, can you say that? Amen. And so I do what I do now, not because, amen, I want the applause and accolades of men, but I'm doing what I do now because I've got some children yeah. Yeah. and some grandchildren. Yeah. And I've got to make sure that this world is better after I've been here yeah. than it was before I got here. Y'all don't hear me today. Oh, somebody shout, think legacy. Oh, the Bible says, blessed is the man who leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Listen, what makes you eligible for a wealth transfer is when you leave a legacy we're talking about. Somebody shall think legacy. Think legacy. Mm, and then finally, uh, if you're going to make it work at all, uh, you got to understand, you got to look uh -huh. to Jesus. Yeah. 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 Ooh, my God, you got to understand that without God, you can do nothing. Without God, you would fail. Without God, you would be like a ship without a 
of sin. But I found out, come on, let's work. I found out that, amen, if you put him first, God will do what you can't do. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. And I need to tell somebody that's been putting God first uh, in the way that you live. Uh, somebody that's been putting God first uh, in your giving. Uh, somebody that's putting God first uh, in the way that you love. Uh, God told me to tell you uh, that your season of subtraction uh, is now over. Uh, and your season of addition uh, is now at hand. Uh, somebody shout yes, Lord. That's why I made up in my mind that I'm going to look to Jesus. I'm going to look because I know where my help comes from. I'm going to look because while I'm sitting on the Jesus, he makes me the center of his job. And I don't know about you, but I don't want the Lord to do anything and leave me out of it. But I'm saying, Lord, whatever you do in this season, please, 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 don't do it without me. My God, today, I found out like David that when you look to Jesus, thank God, you'll find your strength. That's why David said, I will look unto the hills from which coming my help. All my help coming from the Lord who made heaven and who made earth. So look at a neighbor right quick and sing, neighbor, whatever you do, keep your eye on Jesus. If you're glad about it, put those hands together. But, but I've got one more principle I need to share with you. And as we get ready to walk out of here, you already shouted, so I don't have to shout you, do I? Uh, so let me just teach you with the moments I have left. Key principle number three. Somebody say number three. Number three. Stay on the path. Yes. Psalm 16 and verse 11, the Bible says, You will make known to me the path of life. Mm -hmm. In your presence is the fullness of joy. And in your right hand there is, there are pleasures forevermore. Now, now listen, I, I'm leaving you, I'm leaving you. But listen, you can't leave without this key because the Bible says that God will make known unto us the path of life. Uh -huh. Now, path can be an acronym, meaning, first of all, the path is for trust. Uh -huh. yeah. Somebody shout trust. trust. You've got to have trust in your character. Uh -huh. Listen, there is now a lesson that I got to share with you because many times if we're not careful we can automatically give trust when trust has not been earned. Come on. Come on. But I found out that whenever you give something that was not earned it will not be appreciated. All right, all right, all right. Never give your trust until you see that a person is worthy of trust. They got to be trustworthy. That's right. That's right. That's to have your trust. And so the T in the path is for trust. But then humility, amen, is what is connected with the H. Humility means to stay grounded, to never forget where you came from. You ever seen somebody that as soon as they get a position, as soon as they get a title, they lose their everlasting mind? They can't handle power, but you got to understand that if you cannot handle power, you won't have it long. Yeah. 
Oh, come on, can you say amen? Uh, this is why we must practice humility. But then the E in the past stands for embrace. Somebody shout embrace. embrace. That means that we have to learn how to change when change is necessary. And we have to learn to not just tolerate other folk. But celebrate others. A whole lot of folk, amen, you put up with because you don't feel like you have any choice. But amen, when you learn how to master relationship, you learn how to look for the good. Because, believe it or not, everybody has some grain of good in them. And sometimes it's hard to see. Sometimes you got to look up under stuff and <laughs> uncover and peel back and wait. Oh, but eventually you'll find that there is a semblance of good in everybody. And when you see it, celebrate it. Uh, the P in the path is for passion, meaning that we've got to maintain a strong work ethic. Come on, can you say amen? amen. Oh, I'm born of Jesus, but I, I got to teach him while I got the attention. Then the A in the path is for attitude. Somebody shout attitude. attitude. Uh, in other words, you've got to be positive. Yeah. Amen. I, I can hear my mother, amen, in, in her wisdom saying you can draw more flies with honey All right. uh, than you can with vinegar. Right. Listen, it's just nice. To be nice. Amen. And if you want positive things to happen in your life, you've got to be the seed that yields that kind of harvest. In other words, if you want it, you've got to first be it. Oh, somebody say amen. Then the team in the path is for being a team player. Listen, in the day wherein we live more than ever before, we have to understand that we are in this thing together. Yes. You can walk with me now. We are in this thing called life together. Yes. And the truth is, amen, you are your brother's keeper. Yes. Yes. And we've got to do what we must do. Not just for ourselves, but not just for our family. But understand that we are part of a community. Can you say amen? amen? And so as a team player, you proactively share good ideas. If you can help somebody, it is your obligation. It is your duty. It is God's expectation that you help those that you can help. Now you can't help everybody. Right, 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 right. Some folk would no help if it raised up and slapped them in the mouth. Oh, I know I'm right about it. Amen. Some folk would rather, amen, bump their head against it instead of learning from the experience that you already gone through. Oh, come on. But see, I don't know about you, but I've always been, I don't have to burn my hand on it Come on. for me to figure out that that thing is hot. If you tell me, you know what, you may want to be careful because that is hot, hot. And I don't have to be foolish enough to go, no, I don't know if it's hot or not. You've got to learn from the wisdom of those who know better. Can you say amen? And then last, not least, H stands for honesty. This is something that must be demonstrated. In a world wherein we live, Honesty has become almost a lost okay. virtue. That's so true. So true. But you've got to always tell the truth. Yeah. Tell the truth uh -huh. about yourself. Right. To yourself. To, yourself, uh -huh. to others. Yeah. And to others amen. about yourself. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Come on, can you say amen? amen? And if you will stay on the path. And what you will discover is that that path causes you to be eligible for the fullness of joy. When you stay on the path, Jesus said it like this. He says, straight is the way, narrow is 
the way. You've got to understand that when you walk circumspectly, when you walk with reverence yeah. to the God who has made you, yeah. that God begins to give you some advantages that's right. That's right. that others can never right. have privy of. So. Father God, I pray now in the name of Jesus, Father, that we as your people would begin to represent you that we would love others as you have loved us give us the power to play it forward father as you have forgiven us give us now the grace to forgive others as you have so entreated us even as you have so waited on us while we were doing what we wanted to do how we wanted to do it. God give us now the grace to wait on the development of those that you have placed in our lives. Some of us are farther along than others. But Father, let us not look with condemnation to those who have not reached where we are. But help us to love like you love. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And for your sake we pray. And let the redeemed of the Lord shout, Amen. Amen.